Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time it is a review of the 2019 miniseries Chernobyl. Now, this is what I like to call a work of historical fiction. So, it's not 100% accurate to the events that occurred in Russia and Chernobyl and Pripyat in the 80s. It uh, does take some creative liberties. That being said, it's due to narrative choices, for the most part, to create a compelling narrative for the miniseries and for the story. Uh, a lot of the factual inaccuracies are very minor from what I've, what I've seen, and it still takes a lot of time and effort to provide as close to a factually accurate facsimile of what actually happened with some minor differences here and there, but nothing that spectacular in terms of uh, egregious, uh, erroneous instances of being uh, untrue or uh, incorrect in regards to what actually happened. So, I know some people have been pointing out what it got wrong and so on and so forth, but I, I, I think it got a, a lot more right than it got wrong, and I absolutely adored this series. I loved Chernobyl. I thought this was easily one of the best things that I had seen from 2019. Uh, it, it lived up to the hype and then some. It was one of the most compelling riveting and just absolutely mesmerizing shows or works of cinema that I had honestly seen in a long time. This was absolutely fantastic. Uh, as soon as it was over, I, I, I had to rush out and buy the Blu-ray because it is that damn good. So, um, I'm probably not going to give away a whole lot in terms of spoilers in this review. I am more than likely probably not going to go as in-depth as I might in other reviews, because honestly, I want people to go into this like I went into Chernobyl. Uh, not knowing a whole lot, not expecting a whole lot, uh, and uh, really taking it all in uh, for the first time because I think that's a really special experience. This is a very emotional series. It deals with a lot of intense emotions, intense events, intense sequences, and I feel that in order for it to have the most power and the most impact, it shouldn't be spoiled in any way. So uh, that's why I'm not going to provide really any spoilers in this, in this review. But um, I wanted to talk about it because it really did stick with me. And it really was something that was just so spectacular that I absolutely had to sit down and talk about it. So, Chernobyl is uh, cr created by Craig Mazin, it's written by Craig Mazin, and it's directed by Johan Renk, who directs every episode of this miniseries. Now, Craig Mazin, you might recognize because he was one of the writers, one of the main uh, people behind The Hangover. So, the fact that he was capable of doing something like this, a compelling, riveting, just absolutely stunning miniseries based on one of the most horrific events in history, and definitely one of the most horrific accidents in history, is honestly quite astonishing. Just about as astonishing as the series itself, because I, I, I didn't expect that. I don't think anyone expected that Craig Mazin was capable of something like this. So it just goes to show you, don't judge the book by its cover. 
don't don't judge your uh, screenwriters and their ability based on uh, their previous work or what they're known for because they might come out and just blow you away with something like Chernobyl. I thought the writing in this was some of the best that I had seen from 2019 in any kind of story that was adapted to any kind of film. Uh, and it definitely deserved the outstanding writing, uh, Emmy, uh, because I can't think of anything else that had writing that was any better. I mean, there are so many really great, uh, lines of dialogue in this, in this series. And there's a lot of it. There's a huge emphasis in this series on dialogue and it carries a lot of weight and that easily could have failed but it doesn't because the dialogue is so well written and the story and everything is just so well written everything fits together so well that it doesn't really matter that there's a lot of dialogue because there's a lot of instances where you get to shows like this or stories like this that are dialogue heavy and it can become pretentious or, or it can you can feel empty or it can or it doesn't really have the same impact as as uh, other stories that have more of a focus on what happens versus telling you what happens. But this is not one of those instances. I mean, the the tagline for the show is what is the cost of lies? And this show shows you what the cost of lies are in great detail with great lines of dialogue and with some equally as compelling and just stunning bits of cinematography and direction. Uh, there are sequences in this that are absolutely haunting. There are sequences in this that are gorgeous, that are beautiful, despite their subject material. Um, it is just a tour de force of filmmaking and storytelling all across the board. So, uh, yeah, it won Emmys for Outstanding Writing, Outstanding Limited Series, Outstanding Directing, uh, which it deserved all of those awards. Uh, the direction by uh, Johan Rank is, it is absolutely jaw-dropping at times. Uh, the, the attention to detail, the, the visuals... I mean, this film is, I mean, this, I, I keep saying, it's not really a film, it's a miniseries, but I'm so used to talking about films, forgive me, but this miniseries, it's got so many shots and sequences in it that are just stunning to look at, uh, from, if you love film, and you love just gorgeous, brilliant cinematography, then you definitely should check this series out sometime because it has so many sequences in it that are prime examples of just gorgeous and stunning cinematography and direction. He also works spectacularly and uh, really well with his actors and gets the most out of them. Uh, this is a this is a series that is very heavy in terms of its tone. It's a depressing series. It's a gut punch. It's not just a gut punch. It's numerous gut punches, one after another. So this is the kind of series and the kind of project that if you don't have the right director behind it, you can get inconsistent results with your actors because there's going to be one, uh, one day at shooting where they're more comfortable uh, with the material uh, versus another day where they might not be as comfortable with it. But uh, the director clearly did a really good job in terms of getting these actors to be as comfortable as they possibly can be with this material at all times. There's a consistency here, which is remarkable. And that is something that definitely makes this stand out. Because, I mean, all the performances all across the board are equally as impressive as the last. I mean, these are all really great performances by by the cast. I mean, it's not just Jared Harris as Lagosov or Stellan Skarsgård as Boris or Emily Watson as Ulana. Uh, you know, Paul Ritter is also really good as Dilatlov. 
uh, Jesse Buckley as Ludmilla. Um, everyone in this cast who is either main or supporting are all delivering equally as impressive performances to me. Uh, everyone had their role, everyone played a part, and everyone nailed it. And that is even supporting cast, even even the you know the head of the uh, the mining group, you know, he, he, just these just these little things that you don't really necessarily think about because you're just so drawn into the show. It's a series that just draws you in so early and keeps you just glued to the screen and to what's happening and involved in the story so much that you don't necessarily appreciate all of these little pieces, all these little puzzle pieces that combine together to create this beautiful picture that is this series, Chernobyl. And, you know, I think the everyone in this cast deserves equally as much praise as the main cast do. But, I mean, the, the triple threat of Jared Harris, Stellan Skarsgård, and Emily Watson, it's definitely one of the best uh, examples of a main cast who dominate the screen time just delivering and just absolutely killing it that I can think of. Uh, all three of them were on equal playing fields and all three of them were all stars. They were really um, great. And I know I might sound repetitive because, you know, I might be using the same uh, terminology to discuss and, and, and to uh, say how good the show is. Uh, but I mean, great is just a, it's just a perfect word for this series. I can't think of anything else. I mean, other, you know, fantastic, amazing, spectacular, uh, terrific, like any word that represent resembles high quality, this show, this series is an example of that. So yeah, really great performances, uh, that were just, uh, a treat to watch to watch these actors work with such wonderful material they had so much to work with too that's an, that's the other thing I mean the script was so rife with opportunity and moments for all of these uh, actors to really shine and uh, it's one of those scripts and for a miniseries that doesn't come around that often and it's just it's just amazing to me how well everything works and how each actor especially in the main cast has so many opportunities and so much meat on the bone to just really deliver an unbelievably satisfying uh, series of performances uh, as a fan of film as a fan of acting as a fan of television as a fan of storytelling uh, on the film medium, uh, it's just something that is just a wonder to behold. Uh, and also how everything just combines together to this really just delectable mix uh, the, with the direction, with the cinematography, with the performances by the cast, with the writing, with the score by um, Hildur uh, Guan uh, Dottir. I probably butchered the last name. Uh, my apologies. But I mean, it's a absolutely haunting and great score. It really does create the perfect amount of mood and atmosphere for what goes on in the series and also provides the perfect amount of heart for sequences where it's necessary. Um, there's a piece that plays in the end credits of this whole series that really did speak to me and it, it to me it captures the spirit of the hard-working men and women who worked on trying to you know prevent the meltdown at Chernobyl the uh, individuals that worked at Chernobyl when it's uh, when the reactor exploded and just everyone that was involved with dealing with this just terrifying and 
horrific situation in history. I feel this score just did a just did a really noteworthy job of capturing the spirit of those workers and the spirit of those people. And it's just one of those scores that it's also every bit as gorgeous as the cinematography or or the shots in this film. Um I also, I mean, in this series, I just keep bringing a film because it looks like a film. This doesn't look like a series. This doesn't look like a TV show. This looks like a movie. It has the production values and the editing and the cinematography and the direction of a big budget film. So that's that's the reason why I, I keep mixing the things together because it does not look like a TV show at all. So, um, definitely want to mention, uh, the editors, Jinx Godfrey and Simon Smith, cinematography by Jacob, Jacob, uh, Ire, probably pronounced his name wrong. My apologies. Um, and for a series that's five episodes long with, uh, varying lengths, um, some episodes are shorter than others. This is around like six hours, probably. I think, I think it's around that in terms of running time. 321 minutes is the approximate running time of this series. Despite that long running time, it goes by quick. This is a series that I couldn't binge watch in in one night because I just did not have the ability to do so because I had something I had to do the next day. But like, if I didn't have anything to do the next day, I would have binge watched the entire series in one night easily because it was that well done it was that finely crafted and it was that just gripping and powerful of a series i and it did such a good job with the cliffhangers at the end of uh each episode that just made you compelled to continue watching uh and uh there are also other elements in this show that i just absolutely loved i mean i'm a huge fan of horror as you can see and this has some genuine horror elements to it. There are sequences in this that are straight out of your nightmares. There are sequences in this that deal with some real terror. Not stuff that's, you know, supernatural. We're not talking about ghosts. We're not talking about undead slashers. We're talking about a real horror of a nuclear explosion and the aftermath and the fallout of it. And, you know, how many people either sacrifice their lives to uh, prevent it from getting worse or those who died in the line of fire, so to speak, those who died due to the cost of lies and those who were unwilling or unwitting. I mean, those who unwittingly walked into their own deaths. I mean, the bridge of death. If you've seen the series, you know what I'm talking about. And it's such a it's such a gorgeous sequence in the film, but it's so hard to watch because you know what the effects are. You know what the end result is. This beautiful sequence with these villagers reacting and 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 being mesmerized by nuclear fallout and these ashes that fall from the sky. Like it's snow. They don't know. They have no idea that it's deadly. They have no idea that the ash is going to kill them. And that and and despite the fact that we know what it's going to do and we know the end result, it's such a intense sequence to watch, despite how gorgeous it's filmed and how you have all the slow-mo going on and all of that, it's such a hard scene to watch because you know what the end result is. It's one of those examples of a bit of a story where you know what happens, but that doesn't make it any less compelling. And that's the thing. Like, you know what happens in Chernobyl. You know a reactor exploded. You know there was a horrific uh, result of that explosion. But... This series puts faces. This series puts people to this explosion and makes it more than just a news story. 
It goes deep. It goes, it talks about all the people who were there in the reactor and had to listen to orders that they didn't necessarily agree with, but because of the politics at the time, they just had to kind of deal with it and also at the same time deal with the fallout of what happened. The, the, you also have individuals who volunteered to do their part to save whatever they could that was left after Chernobyl and to prevent future occurrences of even more devastation and death. People who agreed willingly to sacrifice themselves for their country and for other countries and for other people they don't even know because it had to be done. Because if, if, if there weren't people who volunteered to combat and to prevent the, the aftermath from getting worse, then the, the devastation would have been astronomical. And it already was astronomical, but it would, it would have been even more astronomical if they didn't choose to make that sacrifice. And these are faces and these are people and these are individuals that you don't hear about as much when it comes to Chernobyl. You only really got the surface level when it comes to Chernobyl on the news or in other bits of media. So it was such an eye opener to me to see how many different people were involved with and responsible for not only uh, being a part of the uh, accident and the explosion, but also, also those who were treating it, those who were, who were doing whatever they could to prevent it from getting worse than it already was. And of course, the show focuses on the politics at the time as well, but I mean, it, it's it, it's unavoidable, and it's a big reason why the explosion even happened in the first place, because of uh, Russia's refusal to um, to adapt and, and and to realize that they're not perfect, you know, that there are mistakes that that are made and there are things that happen within the, the state that are, are uh, lead to less than desirable results. The cost of lies is a nuclear reactor exploding. And I also want to, I would be remiss if I didn't mention other things like the makeup special effects. This series at times does have CGI but it only has CGI where they couldn't recreate things practically. Um, so there are some shots of like the reactor exploding and some other stuff that's CG. But it's it's well done. Uh, it's hard to notice at times because it's so well done. But there are also times where they go practical. And when it comes to the men who are affected by the radiation... This series does not hold back. It it it's medically accurate. It it's it's absolutely disgusting and horrible, but that's the reality of it. And despite how horrific the 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 makeup is on on these these men who were exposed to this extreme amount of radiation, with their skin just tearing apart at the seams, the accuracy, the attention to detail, the makeup effects that are just absolutely marvelous, even though it's such a horrific thing, it just takes this show to an even higher level because they could have easily not went there. They could have easily taken a business decision and didn't want to uh, gross out audiences or didn't want to uh, kick them in the stomach even more than they already did. But no, they decided, nope, we're going to go there. You need to see this. You need to see the cost of lies. And it's unforgettable. It's, it's 
to me, it's just every. I mean, the images of of these men with this makeup of them just being no longer being men. I I will never forget. I will never forget it. It will be locked in my memory banks till the day I die. It was that compelling and it was that well done in terms of the makeup effects and those sequences. And the actors did a great job too because it, they could have easily overdone it in terms of, of of acting in pain or dying, but none of them did that. And you bought that they were in this extreme amount of pain and that they were in the situation that they were in, the dire straits that they were in, and that just made those sequences even more compelling and memorable. Um and that's something that's straight out of the horror genre too. The disfigurement. The body horror. Because it was hard to even see or recognize a body at that point. So, um, yeah, there's just so many things about this show that I loved. The series that I loved, I thought were just great. Uh, and th there are a lot of twists and turns that happen. There are a lot of sequences in this that are memorable to me and just completely unforgettable. Um, the performances were all great. The direction was great. The writing was great. The cinematography was gorgeous. The editing was excellent. Uh, this is just this is just the the execution of this series is a prime example of the execution of excellence. Like this is just an excellent show. It's an excellent series, and I really don't know what else to say about it, because I've said a lot already, and uh, I just don't want to risk giving away any more than I already have, which isn't a lot, but it might be more than, than I initially wanted to, but um, yeah, just a powerhouse of a series, just such a spectacular uh, series that I cannot recommend enough. Uh, if this concept, if this, if the history, if, if the um, accident of Chernobyl in any way interests you, if uh, you like what you see in the trailers for this show, if what I'm talking about and how I am detailing or, or, or describing the series uh, perks or interest in any way whatsoever, go and see this show. Buy it on Blu-ray, rent it, stream it, however you can do it, do it. Because I think it'll definitely be rewarding to you in some way or another. Um, oh, oh, I just remembered, I might as well mention the, produ the production design, the attention to detail in terms of making things look uh, accurate, to the time period, the costume design, uh, I mean, everything. I mean, just this, this, this series is just, I mean, the last episode, most of it is just a trial with Logosov talking to a group of, of you know, Russians at this trial and describing all these things and uh, talking about how a nuclear reactor works. And it's, it's just riveting stuff. It could be boring, but it isn't, it isn't boring at all. You're glued to the screen, despite the fact that, you know, he's using all these big words and all this science stuff. And it's not boring. It's not tedious. It's it's equally as compelling as all the other stuff because you, you bought into the series. You bought into the story and you want to see how it ends. And you also, the performances are just so standout and so great that, you know... <laughs> even if Jared Harris is just talking, you know, about the science of a nuclear reactor, you, you just can't help but sit there and just watch in awe. So, um, yeah, it's just such a, such a great series. Um, and even if it doesn't interest you, I still recommend you give it a watch at least once, because I really feel that this series is something that everyone should watch at least one time because this is an event in history that should never be forgotten. We should never forget what happened at Chernobyl and how it happened. Because if we forget what happened at Chernobyl and how it occurred, we could be doomed to repeat it once again. And that would be truly tragic. So, 
that's something that I feel strongly about and I'm very passionate about. And I think that this series does more than any other form of medium and any other story, any other article can do in terms of really getting that point across to people that this is something that should never happen again and that we should do everything in our power to make sure that it doesn't happen again. So, um, I'm probably going to end this uh, review, of course, if I would rate it a five star. I don't really do that with series, but if I did rate this 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, I, I can't think of a single thing wrong with this series. It's that well done in terms of uh, in terms of a technical standpoint. It's that well done in terms of performances, in terms of uh, writing, in terms of the story. Uh, it, it's, it's just a masterwork. It's, it's, it's a masterpiece of storytelling and the performances and, and directing and cinematography and editing and, and everything. And I'm going to end this uh, video with, with a quote from the film, the la the ending scene. This is the last lines of the series by uh, Lagosov, where as he's driven away from Chernobyl by the KGB, his voice on tape is heard. And he says this, to be a scientist is to be naive. We are so focused on our search for truth, we fail to consider how few actually want us to find it. But it is always there, whether we see it or not, whether we choose to or not. The truth doesn't care about our needs or wants. It doesn't care about our governments, our ideologies, our religions. It will lie and wait for all time. And this, at last, is the gift of Chernobyl. Where I once would fear the cost of truth, now I only ask, what is the cost of lies?